Today, men know the Seven as statues in the Septs, but in the old days, the gods themselves walked among men. They crowned Hugo of the Hill, the first king of the Andal people, and promised him that his descendants would rule great kingdoms in a foreign continent. When the time came, the Andals carved the seven-pointed star upon their bodies and set sail for the strange land across the narrow sea, Westeros. Whilst Andal warriors battled the first men for kingdoms, Andal septons battled for souls and were received just as courteously. We don't know how many bold and pious men lost their lives, but adversity bred strength. Our purest and most righteous believers took up the sword to defend and preserve the faith from its enemies. So was born the Order of the Faith Militant. When Aegon the Conqueror landed in Westeros, the High Septon locked himself in a sept for seven days and seven nights. Finally, the crone lifted her golden lamp and showed him the path ahead. The High Septon himself would anoint and crown Aegon as Lord of the Seven Kingdoms, and the Faith Militant rallied behind Aegon in governing his newly united land. Yet Aegon and his sisters never wholly accepted the Faith. The High Septon had conceded Aegon's marriages to his sisters as a relic of his Valerian heritage which would soon fade. But when Aegon's heir wed his daughter to his son, the faith could brook such abomination no longer. The High Septon led the denunciation of the Targaryens, and all over Westeros the faith militant took up their swords against the dynasty and its supporters. The faith militant set upon and punished the Septon who had performed the ceremony. A few of the faith militants more militant members even scaled the walls of the castle and would have slain the king and his family had a knight of the king's guard not intervened. Frightened, the king fled to Dragonstone, where he soon died of cramps. And so ascended the king's younger brother, Magor the Cruel. His first act was to challenge the faith militant to kill him if they believed his rule to be ungodly. To the order's eternal credit, they accepted. Sir Damon Morrigan proposed a trial by seven. Sir Damon and six of the Faith Militant against the king and his six champions. It was a contest in which the kingdom itself was at stake, and the accounts and tales are many. But at the end of it, Magor alone lived, proving that the throne was rightfully his. He mounted the black dragon, Beleriand, and burnt down the sept in King's Landing, while the Faith Militant were inside at morning prayers. The screams of the burning and dying men were said to echo throughout the city. Though Mega had won the trial by seven, he demanded the complete destruction of the Faith Militant and the Faith itself, if necessary. He made war upon the Order wherever he found it. Yet the Faith Militant would not surrender raising armies of their own and turning Mega's own lords against him. The father's justice may not always be swift, but it is certain. One morning, Mega was found dead on the Iron Throne. No one knows how. Mega's cruelty died with him. His successor saw the wisdom of a united crown and faith, and his hand reached an accord with the High Septon. As long as the Iron Throne defended the faith, the faith would put aside its own swords and its condemnation of the Targaryens. Perhaps the High Septon felt he had no course but compromise. Outlawed and hunted for years, the faith militant was but a shadow of its former self. Without its own guardians, the faith would have to rely on corrupt worldly kings and their corrupt worldly courts. For thousands of years, the Faith Militant had stood watch over the Faith. And then, its sun set. Now, after years of war and destruction, of abomination and blasphemy, none can argue that we have been walking through darkness. Perhaps the time has come when the sun must rise again. <laughs>